God bless you, everybody. Welcome, family. And to God be the glory for you today. It is a great day for us to be here. Thank you for being a partner with us as we go forth into all the world, sharing the great news of Jesus Christ. As always, we must start off in prayer to be prepared for the word. So, Father, today, I thank you. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this message. May it go forth as you intend it. I thank you that every word is yours. May we have ears to hear, eyes to see, and spirits to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today I want to share with you 10 truths about lies. Now, lies are all over. Some may call it a bit of disinformation, but lies are lies, period. And we need to be able to move through the lies to know the truth. And so today I'm going to tell you 10 truths about lies so that you are not deceived by those doctrines of demons. Now the first truth about lies is that they come in all sizes. Now it's kind of a funny thing when we think a lie coming in a different size because many times we think about them in color. Oh, it's just a little white lie. It's just this. It's just a little. It was a little one. Well little white whatever color does not change the fact that lies come in all sizes what do i mean by this well the serpent he lied and look at his size so when we go into the book of genesis check this out in genesis chapter 3 in genesis 3 chapter 3 verse 4 and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in day in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. So the lies can look like any single thing. We have to be walking in discernment to discern the lie. They come in all sizes. Now, we also know that in the book of Genesis that that we can see here in chapter 12 chapter 12 and it's starting in 11 that <laughs> they when I say they come in all sizes, listen to this, chapter 12 verse 11 and it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall, shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they, sh they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. So he thought it appropriate to lie. But the lies come in all sizes. Not only do the liars come in all sizes, but the lies come in all sizes. We could really get in and, and examine what what would cause him to have such a little faith in the Lord that the Lord wouldn't protect him that he needed to lie about his about his his wife. But we'll set that aside for, for today. Now the second point of the truth about the lies is that anybody believes them. And that's very evident by what is happening in our society. Many people are believing the lie that God made a mistake when he created them in the color that he created them. They believe the lie that God made a mistake when he created the man or when he created them woman or boy or girl. People are believing lies all over. The lies are rampant in our society. But we need to understand that, that this truth is the only way for you to discern the lie from the truth. The answer is always in here. Now, you may argue and say, yeah, but there's certain things that are not found in the Bible. I had to do this and I had to do that. But I will tell you this. I remember probably back in 2016, 17, when, when a gentleman wanted to argue the point about um, math not being in the Bible. And I found in Leviticus that pi, you know, 3.14, is, is actually in the book of Leviticus. You just have to understand how to read it. And so that was such a victory. Then look, even pi is in here. How about that, right? So to God be the glory. But you see, anyone believes the lies. Many people that fall into a strong delusion will believe the lies. Many people that fall prey to the 
get rich schemes. They believe the lies. They've not read the book of, of Proverbs where we are told that those that seek fantasies end up broke. He already gives us the wisdom that we need. So you have to be aware that anyone believes them. So it doesn't matter who. You have to really recognize that. That just because someone is a this or this does not, does not mean that they will not be deceived by lies. None are immune. This is why we need to really be walking so close with the Lord so we can stay protected from the lies that are out there that, that if we believe them that they will just get a hold of us. You don't have time for that and you don't need to die an early death by believing the lies that are being pushed all throughout society that you need to to. Um, receive certain things that would cause an early death. So we don't need to entertain any, any of those things. A lie is a lie, and, and it's a lie. Now, turn with me to truth number three about lies. It's found in the book of Jeremiah. In the book of Jeremiah, and it's chapter 17... And this is just really interesting that when you begin to see this, you can really sit back and see much more when you get away from all of the lies. In Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9, it reads this, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. The heart is de deceitful above all things. If you don't know the truth, then the lie will become the truth. This is why it is so very important that we speak truth over the youth. Because the youth, their minds are so precious. They are just the most precious of little people. And, and schools are destroying them. Let me give you, let me give you an example of this. In, in, a, in, in the state of California, in the U.S., the Teachers Association... The teachers were found out to be making fun of the parents because they were saying that how stupid the parents are, that the, that they, the teachers, they have the power to indoctrinate the children and that they will so use in the school announcement system and these, these sort of things to get the minds of the children. The enemy knows how to wage war. We need to be equipped. The way that you will win the war is with the word of God. There is no other way. But if you do not know truth, you will be easily deceived by the lie. The youth are innocent, which is why the bully devil and his agents have to go after the youth because they don't know. They're unlearned. They're untrained. They're ill-advised if we are not interceding and standing for the children. And so if you do not know the truth and you believe the lies, you will end up living a lie, which happens so often. Think of all the people that, and maybe even you, you've lived, you've lived a life that, that really wasn't the life you wanted to live. But you believe the lie. You believe the lie that if you if you bought a bigger house, you would be happy. Well, that's a lie because it's just more house to clean. You believe the lie that if you marry the pretty woman or the or the hot man, that you'll have this. Well, no, they're just high maintenance. Then you believe that, and and I'm saying that from a worldly standpoint. Okay, if you if you believe the lie that that this will get you that you deceive, we have to sit back and look at what what the lies are. The lie would be that you can't get it with Jesus, and the truth is that you cannot live without Jesus. See, the lie will tell you you can get through life and you don't need Jesus because you're smart. Lie, lie, lie. If you don't know the truth, the lies will become the truth. Period. The only way of salvation is Jesus Christ. There is nothing that will heal you like Jesus Christ. So if anybody wants to tell you that, they're a liar and the truth is not in them. Okay? Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Nobody gets to the Father except through Him. So anybody tells you there are many paths, yeah, there's your path, there's my path, but there's only one path, and that is Jesus Christ. Period. They tell you otherwise, the truth is not in them, and they're a liar, and you need to 
make a choice. Now, in the book of John, this is truth number four, found in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 44. When you hear the lie, you got to go to the root. Huh. Well, John 8.44 tells us this. Ye are of your father the devil, and lust, the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The devil is the father of lies. When you hear a lie, it's being spoken by through someone, somewhere, some way that is a representative of the father of lies. Anything that does not align up with this truth is a lie. I'll give you an example. Psalms 139.14 tells us you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You want to want to look in the mirror and say, well, I'm this and I'm that and I'm too fat and I'm not skinny enough and my hair isn't this and I don't have that and woe was me in the way that God made me and all of these things. Well, those are lies. Period. I'll never get period lie. Well, you know what? No one lie. I can't lie. Lie. This is why we are told to take every thought captive unto the Lord, because any thought that you entertain that is a lie, it's coming from the father of lies, and now you just entered into agreement with the father of lies, and you, dear precious child of God, do not have time for that, because you need to be looking up Matthew 6.33, the kingdom of God. So we, we look up, we seek first his kingdom, and all righteousness shall be given unto us. Take, thought, take every thought captive unto Jesus Christ and make it obedient to him. The devil is the father of all lies. That is a truth. That is a fact. That is right here written in God's word. And anything that you believe or agree with that is that is going to set you in a position that you don't want to go. Truth number five. You probably tell yourself more lies than you think. How do we know this? Turn with me to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms, chapter 34. Psalms 34, verse 12. Tells us, gives us this command. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. You probably have told yourself more lies than you think. And right now you're probably trying to lie to yourself. Like, I haven't done that. I, do I do that? You probably do. Yes. We tell ourselves all kinds of lies all the time. But it's the truth that sets us free. When you really begin to see the truth and rest in the truth, then the lies won't, won't be so evident and you won't have to live in the, the lies and try to make the lies the truth. See, this is something that's very easy to fall prey to doing because it's so easy. We tell our, ourselves lies all the time. Now, I'll give you one example. Ladies, how often have you been in a store, you find a fabulous blouse or a fabulous dress that's just a little bit too snug, and so you lie to yourself thinking, well, you know what? I'm going to start that diet anyway. I'll lose the pounds and then it'll just look fabulous. Yeah, you're not going to. You may, you may think that you're going to, but how often have you? And I can testify in my image consulting business going into women's closets and men's closets, but women tend to do this a little bit more than in my business going in and, and helping women fix their closets, replace items that they don't need, and, and replenish with what they do need. I see it all the time that when 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 they, they deceive themselves, well, you know what, I'm going to lose those five pounds. Well, if you haven't already, just because you like a blouse doesn't mean you're going to. You're going to leave there, be hungry, and especially if you have friends with you that like to eat. Then you're just going to go and have some lunch, and then then it'll never fit. And then you say, what, what, what was I thinking? 
you were telling yourself a lie. Buy what fits that what fits for where you are, and you will be much you will fare much much better. But you see, we often tell ourselves more lies. Oh, you know, what if we have another child and it'll get better? No, it won't. It's going to be more costly. And you're still going to hate each other. And you have to have sex to even have the kids in the first place. And if you're not already happy, then that's not going to solve the problem. You may have a joy for a moment, but that's not even joy. And then, and then you pay for it the rest of your lives, right? So we tell ourselves, think of all the lies. Well, you know what? When I get a promotion, I'll be happy. No, you won't. You just have, you, no, you won't. You tell yourself that. You lie to yourself, telling yourself that you think that. And then when you get the promotion, no, you're worse off than you were because all you have to do is paperwork. And you really enjoyed what you, what you really were doing, but that promotion took that away. It happens all the time. We have to really just get to the Word of God and really recognize that we don't need to lie to ourselves. We really don't. When you get to the crux of things, where, where are you right now? Where are you right now? When you really strip off all this other stuff and you really get to the crux of it, you probably don't even want all of what you're seeking to do. You probably want to live more, much more simple. I had a client in Australia that all he wanted to do, he was, he was a corporate executive. He had 12 weeks paid vacation, which if you're in Australia, you probably need that much because you've got to fly somewhere, right? But, but within that, what he wanted most was to become a gym teacher. But you know what? He, he was lying to himself thinking that next year he would and next year he would. And all he really wanted to do was be a gym teacher. But he wouldn't give up what was needed to live his truth. It's very sad. I mean, he had a nice house on the beach, but what he really wanted wasn't a house on the beach. <laughs> what, he, what, he really, what he wanted was something that, that he wouldn't give up to go and get. And, and so, how about you? It's time to lay down the lies. Write down all the lies that you agreed with and then break, break up with them. It's time to break up with them. Do you really want that? Do you just want that? Do you need it? Or is it just that you think it's going to bring you something? Because it really doesn't. It just doesn't. You can have all this stuff. You can have everything you ever wanted and realize you just wanted all the wrong things. The lies need to be broken. The truth, <laughs> you probably tell yourself more lies than what you think. Now, point number six, or truth number six, is that you're surrounded by lies. Liars are everywhere. Turn on the television. Liars are everywhere. There is a movie in the 80s that, that was kind of an interesting movie. It's called, I think, They Live. And, and it's about a man that everywhere he went when he saw an advertisement, he saw what was behind the advertisement. Which, of course, think about any food company advertisement. Are they even advertising food? Mm, no, but what are they wanting? They're wanting you to consume. They're wanting you to buy. They're wanting you to part with your money to give you a false idea of something that that product will get you. Your lips will be no more plump than they are now. Your eyelashes, okay, do you do you really need five-inch eyelashes and six-inch fingernails? Let's just let's look at some of these things that, that they want us to believe as a society that you need to get this and that, you, that, that this is what you need and then you need a boost one. And every six months, they're wanting to deceive you. We are surrounded by a society of liars. The liars lie, period. The truth is not in them. That is why they're selling you all of these things that they want you to believe about yourself so that they can continue to make a profit off of you. They're a bunch of user scam artists. I'm not saying all, but you have to recognize those that are doing that. What the intent is, is to lie. Liars are everywhere. The truth is here. The truth is here. Salvation is found in Jesus Christ. The lies of what you're trying to... Well, you know, when I get my new car... Yeah, they're still not going to like you. Well, you know what? If I buy her... No, she still won't date you. You can increase your value all day long. She's still not going to want you because she didn't want you when you didn't have any of it. If she wanted you, she'd want you. But she don't want you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to be really honest today. Because the lies are all around us. And they're getting more deceptive every single day. You have to be on guard and on watch to even recognize the, whether or not you are talking to a real person or is it a deep fake. You have to discern these things to discern so that you recognize what you are surrounded by. You're surrounded by people that are going to tell you all kinds of things. All kinds of things. And it doesn't matter in what capacity. You have to really discern and you need to know to whom you're sharing your business with because many people have an opinion. Doesn't mean you want it, doesn't mean you need it, and it doesn't mean they need to share it. But trust me, they will share 
You don't. You may not even need it, but the, we are surrounded by a society of liars. Everywhere you go, it's not. A, it, this is not a message to discourage you, but this is a message to open your eyes. They will repackage the truth, but it's still. Listen, just because you put on last year's bow, it's still. It's you're still lying. Just because they repackage it and want you to think that this is a new green thing and that we see we're recycling, see we use last year's bows. Yeah, they're still lying. Still lying. The truth is not in them. Lies. You have to discern this. I'll tell you one of the one person that, that didn't accept any of the lies is, is King Solomon. He played no games. Now Solomon was wise, we might say wise and a fool. You can be wise and, and a fool. I mean, what do you need a city full of women for? I mean, let's just, we could ask that question. I got a list of so far of almost 900 questions I want to ask Solomon. Like, at what point did you get bored with women? Did you get bored here and then you needed another one and found out that she's just no different than, I mean, what, did you prefer brunettes or red? Like, what, what was it? Why, why so many? Was it a game? Like, what were you attempting to conquer? Did you just want to build your own military? <laughs> I mean, what really, could you not find enough? Like, what, what was going on, Solomon? But here's the deal. Let me just tell you about Solomon. When his brother tried to go against him, he had him killed. Period. Done. Solomon didn't play. You have to recognize that. Solomon did not play. He did not tolerate or accept lies. So when we look at society, and society is full of lies, why do we entertain that which lies? There, and I've shared this with you before. I don't have the book. It's on my list. But it is a book that, that Mr. Gates is a proponent of that teaches you how to lie using statistics. So just because you hear a statistic, oh, you know, 85% of, of this, oh, oh, every 30 seconds a woman considers killing someone. So the st statistic says. Right. Surrounded by lies. Do not believe that just because it's a statistic that somebody said means that it is proportionate true. Oh, you know, that means that, 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 that one in three will, will, will have this. Yeah, that means that the other two won't. So let's just look at the other side of it. You have to be, you have to walk into sermon in these times. You have to know what you are seeing, what you are watching, and know what you are listening to. Because the devil is a father of lies, and we are surrounded, our society is so surrounded by lies. And if you are not careful, you will believe a lie. And it only takes seven times, seven times, for you to be told that one thing before it's believed. So they know this within within the psychology of marketing and advertising and promotions and PR. You say it seven times, and the people will start to believe it. It doesn't matter if it's true. It's a matter of whether or not your perception can be corrected to believe the lie. If you believe the lie, then it becomes becomes the truth and it doesn't matter what anybody else says. We could see this all throughout the political system. It doesn't matter what the facts are. The facts are irrelevant. They don't care about facts. They will distort the facts to make them truth and make you believe the truth that is a lie. You have to discern this stuff. You have to discern this stuff. And we are surrounded by lies. Now turn with me to the book of Proverbs. We're going to go a little bit to the right. The book of Proverbs in chapter 12. Twelve twenty-two. Lies are bondage. That's a truth. Lies are bondage. Now, you may say, well, but it was just a small lie. Well, what do I say then if she asks me if I look fat? You tell her she got 20-20 vision, honey. You just keep it real. <laughs> However, here's the deal. Proverbs twelve twenty-two. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. When someone asks, does this make me look fat? They already know the answer. They just want to trap you in a lie. See, you got you to discern that too. Now, I'm not trying to get, get in anybody's marriages or relationships. Not, that's not my forte. However, we, we look at this and lies are an abomination. Any lie that you receive puts you in bondage. You have to see this. The lie that you don't need Jesus, that'll put you in bondage. The lie that you can do it on your own, lie. Excuse me. The lie that if you get this, it's all lies. Lies are meant to keep you in bondage so you never get free. 
lies are bondage. The lie that, that Jesus won't forgive me for what I've done. And, and I will share it with you, a, a student of mine many years ago, former Marine sniper, he ended up in the hospital and I went to go pray with him and I probably have shared this with you before. And, and the lies just, he's like, the Lord, Jesus won't accept me. I know what I've done. I know what my job was. So do you not think that God knows that? He knows what you've done. He knows, he knows more about what you've done than you know what you've done. And he just could not come to that place of, getting away from the lies. It's the truth that sets us free. And the truth is that we need a savior. Are you ready to get rid of the bondage of the lies that you've been living in? The lies that have been surrounding you that you've accepted and thought were truth? I pray that right now that you are. Because you know what? I lived with so many lies. And the only way that I got free was with Jesus Christ. And, and it doesn't matter what lies you told yourself. It doesn't matter what lies you told other people. It doesn't matter what you've done or not done or how you've done it. What matters is that you choose right at this very moment to get free. That you choose right now to say, you know what, I'm done. No more. I'm not going to do this anymore. I need Jesus. I can't live this lie that I don't need him. All you need to do it's just tell him you need him. It may go something like this. this. You can pray this in your own words, but Father, in Jesus' name, well, Jesus, I'm a mess. I need you. Will you be the center of my life? I'm, I'm, I, re I repent, and repent really just means making a U-turn. You're just going to stop going this way, and you're going to back it up and turn around and go this way. I made a mess of my life and I'm so sorry and I need you. Can you help me? Will you be my Lord and Savior? Amen. It's really that simple. And you know what? He will. He did it for me. And I can tell you that 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 I was I was a mess. And I can say that smiling because it's only by him that I'm even here today. But let me just say Oh, mess. I was a hurt mess. I was abused. I was like, you know those little puppies that come and they're just all decrepit in their paws and, and they look like they just, you just, they, they just need a big hug. And you just, oh, I just got to take this one home. Oh. And, the, and then you start to see that they kind of perk up a little bit. You just love them like Foghorn Leghorn. I just love them forever. And, and you just love on them. And then they just, they just get a little bit, oh, and then their face, they get a little more light and a little bit more and a little bit more. That's, that's how I like it where, I mean, I was just such a battered, bruised, beat up, literally, literally battered, bruised, beat up little girl that, that really needed a savior. And, and he saved me. So it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, I'm just being real today. And you know what? He saved me and he'll save you too. Now, lie number eight or truth about lie. Lies destroy. Lies destroy. They, they destroy. We are seeing this play out right now in society where the lies just keep coming. You can't turn on any television, which I don't know really why you would anyway. <laughs> However, I don't have TV. I have a TV, but I don't have any TV subscription and, and haven't for quite a long time and haven't needed it and realize that it's all lies. It's, it's green screen lies. It's lies. It's lies. And lies destroy the lies of what are being told about people destroy. The, and that's just, that's just in mainstream society. But lies destroy. How do we know this? Uh, let's go to the book of Acts. I'm gonna, you want to get to lies? Lies destroy. Oh, lies destroy. Lies, lies destroy. This is so serious. A lot of times we don't really understand or, or have the reverence of God that we should. You know, our society has no fear of God. America has no fear of God. Look at our America. America just gave God a big F you. Let's just be clear. Not Forgiveness University either. But they have just shut the door on God in many in many ways as a collective society with, with what is happening in America. And don't think you're not going to see its demise coming 
quickly. It's it's here. And and that's what happens when you believe lies. When you believe lies that you don't need to teach your children to pray. When you believe lies that abortion is empowerment. When you believe lies that you can treat your husband's terrible. When you believe lies that that it's okay for man men grown men to sodomize boys. When you believe when you when you lower the age of of um, pedophilia and crimes against children. When you keep lowering the age of, of children to be adults, they're doing that on purpose so they can so they can live deceived. Lies, lies destroy. Lies destroy nations. Lies, de lies destroy. How do we know this? Acts five. Let me just show you this. But a certain man named Ananias was to fear his wife sold a possession. All right, they didn't give it away; they sold it. So praise God that we got we got we got uh, co uh, commerce, and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So now she's just operating with a cunning spirit, right? She was privy to it, but Peter said, Ananias, why hath why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that, and that heard these things. Lies destroy. We may say lies kill. And it was about the space of three hours when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. Yeah. <laughs> then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which had buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then she fell straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young man came in and found her dead and carried her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Lies destroy. The only room or way that you could ever have lies in a marriage is if you have forgiveness or really in any relationship. So if you have room for secrets and lies, you better have room for forgiveness. But lies destroy, they lied. See, we don't, we don't really take, take much credence to, to what we're doing in society. People lie all the time, which is the funny thing about one of the, the little birdie social media platforms is how much, when people wanna lie, and then you got the, the person's like, here's your receipt, honey, I would bring the receipts. You said this and you said this, hypocrite, lie, lie, lie. So that's really one thing that it's good for. But if you didn't lie in the first place, you wouldn't have that problem. But people lie, like, you know, it's Thursday, it's all right. Just get a cup of, cup of joe with my lie. No problem. It's become so normal that we're not even aware of, of the fact that we're doing it. There are consequences. But you see, what happens is that most people don't care about the consequences because they lie to get out of them. What difference does it make? So ask the question. It makes a lot of difference. Because you're not lying to the person, you're lying to the God in that person, and so help you, Jesus, have mercy on your soul. There's no fear of God. Without any fear of God, people lie, cheat, steal, do whatever they want, all in the name of getting what they think that they need that will pacify themselves. But the truth about lies is that lies destroy. And we have to really recognize that and, and really look at our character. I remember when I was praying about some things not too long ago, and and I remember the Lord was showing me the difference between, between um, a character flaw and no character. And it's becoming really more pervasive in our society that people just have no character. They, they just have none. We have to move in a way where we demonstrate what that looks like on the earth, having character. Because so many people don't. They're not taught. They don't know. And the, the example of society and TikTok, uh, we got problems. Lies destroy. Not only, now think about this. It isn't just the fact that, okay, so he held back. She knew. She didn't step in the gap and say, hey, like, she she wasn't like Job's wife that said, curse God and die. No, she said nothing. So she's kind of like like Adam was in, in Genesis, right? So she said nothing, but partook in it, participated in the lie, said nothing, but then died. Now, 
the devastation of all those people because they lied. You think your lies don't matter? They matter. They matter to God. And the people that you're lying to yourself about or lying to others about or lying straight up to others, those lies matter and they destroy. And we have to be aware of that. Turn with me to the book of Genesis. This is, this is uh, truth number, number nine. In the book of Genesis. Chapter four. You hear the snoring. That is Miss Olive. Praise God, she's snoring. Nine. You already know the lie from the truth. Why don't you say the truth? <laughs> well, I don't want to hurt their feel. Lie. You know, they lie. Why don't you just speak the truth? Because they can't handle the truth. Yeah, that's not your problem. You can't handle... No, it's not your problem. We already know they're General and Nicholas. We already know. Or you can't handle the truth. Turn it, Kathy. You already know the lie. You already know the lie. So did Cain. How do we know this? And the Lord said, 4-9 of Genesis, And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Woo! He backed out God. Not wise. Not wise. But he already knew the truth. God already knew as well. See, God asks a question. And, and it was even Sarah that thought she could lie to God. And then Abraham. I mean, how many of these people just lie? <laughs> how many liars are throughout the Bible? Look at Jezebel. I mean, these people lie. Haman, lie. They're just all... Peter, lie. Like, they're just... It's so normal, but we got to break that off. You already know the lie from the truth. You already know. You already know you need Jesus. You already know you need to wake up and read your Bible. You already know you don't need to eat the fourth piece of pie. You already know that. You already know that if you do eat it, you're going to look like what you just ate. You already, you already know the truth. You already know what you're lying about. You already know. You all ready? No, you don't need to be told. You already know. You already know. There's no pill to make that go away. The only thing that will is exercise. Because when you stop taking the pill, then it all comes back double. <laughs> so you have to recognize this. You already know the life and the truth. You already know the truth. You already know deep, deep, deep down. So we're kind of stripping off some things today, like the onion. We're peeling the layers back because we already know the truth. We already know. You already know. It's a matter of surrendering to get to 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 get set free. Now I'm going to take you to Psalms five six. Now. This is the last point here that I'm going to make. You can write this down. Accepting truth is better than accepting a lie. Many people want to accept the lie, but let me tell you something. Many people have accepted the lie, are living with the consequences of it, and are committing suicide at higher rates that we have never seen before. Accepted the lie. The lies are lies. We cannot move in a way that, that we are deceived. Okay? Cannot move in that way. Accepting the lie is not going to set you free. The only way you will be set free is by accepting the truth. Proverbs 5, 6 tells us, The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Hmm. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Accepting the truth is better than a lie. Because if you accept a lie, you've got to keep the lie and then live the lie and then create more lies to keep the lie going. Like the fake it till you make it. And, and, and I remember telling some of my clients this, well, you don't fake it till you make it. I said, don't, you don't do that. We don't do that here. You fake it till you make it, you break it. You break your reputation. You break the trust of the audience. You don't fake it. 
act like it's just fakery, fakery, fakery. No, fakery is bakery. We don't mess with that. The foolish will not stand in thy sight. Accepting the truth. You know what? I need help. You know what? I'm struggling. There's no, there's nothing wrong with being in that position. Jesus cried. Let's be clear. Jesus wept. The shortest statement in the Bible. Jesus wept. We know he did on one occasion, but don't think that he probably didn't more than once. Okay. So when, when we look at these things, the enemy, oh, you men don't cry. Yes, they do. Real men do. Maybe fake men don't, but real men do. Accepting the truth is better and easier than, or it may not be easier, but it's better for you than accepting the lie. I'll do it tomorrow. No, you need to do it today because now you're accepting the lie and trying to live the lie. No, now is the time. Accept the truth. Accept the truth of Jesus Christ. You must accept the truth because you know what? You can live that lie and end up in hell and what a terrible thing that would be for you. Not only that, you'd be living in hell on this earth. On this earth, have you seen it? It, it is terrible. So we have to recognize a few things about this. Now, in the book of Proverbs, okay, in Proverbs 19, chapter 9, it says this, A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish. So, if you're a liar, you need to repent. Which means if you've been lying to yourself, you're a liar, you need to repent. And Lord, I just forgive me for, for lying to myself, for telling myself that I'm these terrible things that I am not because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and I can do all things through you who give me strength. And you are my rock and my salvation and I thank you that only under you can I even have a breath. See, we have to, we have to remove these things because a false witness shall not go unpunished. And he that speaketh lies shall perish. We don't really revere God and his word like generations past. And you know what? Those that, that lies and th those that lie are going to reap what they sow. But if you accept those lies, you equally are guilty, which means you need to study yourself approved. And, and I went through a season many years ago when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit with tongues. I didn't quite know what was happening to me. But I remember when, when I went back to the church that I had attended and I started asking questions. And and I remember as I was asked these questions, as, as I was asking questions, I felt like I had been lied to. I felt like I had been deceived for all those years I sat in that church until the Lord asked me if I knew how to read. Yes. Well, why didn't you read my word and find the truth? <laughs> wow. I accepted a lie and lived it. Now, is it a massive one? Well, when it comes to doctrinal things and 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 uh, then the truth being revealed, well, sure, it was life changing, obviously, right? Anybody who who receives what they receive from the Lord is forever changed. So my point here is that is that accepting the truth is always better than accepting the lie. Now, if you're going to accept the truth, that means you're going to have to get in and know the truth because it's the truth that sets you free. But if you rely on the on the perspectives and the ideologies of everyone else to be your truth, you don't know if their truth is even truth itself. So you need to you need to understand that so you can go free and be free. So when we're looking at the at, at all of these lies, we begin to see, wow, there's there's so many that are all around us, but they come in all sizes. Anyone is believes them. If you don't know the lies from the truth, then you will make the lies your truth. The devil is the father of lies. And you probably do tell yourself more lies than you need to, and you need to stop and recognize that you are surrounded by lies. Lies will keep you in bondage and lies are known to destroy. You already know the lies from the truth and accepting the truth will be much better for you than accepting the lie. So I pray today as you go forth that you, that, that you are free from every lie, that whatever lies you've accepted, believed, received, that you just rebuke them, you get out, you are not receiving them, and, and you will begin to see the web that, is, that has been around you. Oh, well, it's only five minutes. It's only the... It's only 14 cal. It's only 1400 calories. It's only, yeah, it's only, right. Mm -hmm. You get the idea. So today we're going to be breaking some stuff. What a great day it is. And I'm excited for you to see just what you've been surrounded by so you can, you can move in a new way in a new place. And that's my message. So Father, today, 
I thank you for your truth that surpasses all knowledge. I thank you, Father, that, that we can rebuke lies today. I ask by your Holy Spirit that you reveal to every one of my brothers and sisters every lie that they've told themselves, every lie that they're believing, every non-truth that they're trying to make truth that is a lie. I pray, Father, you just expose it all. Just highlight it all, Father, so we can all get for. We need to be free, Father, from ourselves, from the lies, from the lies of society, from the lies that we've told, that we've lived in. Help us to just shed it all and come to you. Father, we thank you that your word is what sets us free. We thank you for the truth of it. We thank you for your son today. We give you the praise and the glory, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And to God be the glory. Yeah, we pray every single day at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. People from all over the world call and join us in prayer. And I invite you to join us. You just simply dial 214-586-0411. And you can go to julieblairministries.org. And you will see on the on the on the left side, right, right, right when you get underneath the, the heading, there is the there's the daily prayer. And there we've got all of our country codes listed. You just dial your country code, access will bring you right in, and it's a free call. So I invite you to join us, and every Thursday night I teach at 7 p.m. It is the Kingdom Mentorship Call for Advanced Discipleship. If you are really wanting to move in the advancement of God's kingdom in new ways and really move in the things of God, I invite you to join us. You can go to julieblairministries.org for much more. We're still working on, on revamping our website, and so just be please be patient with us. There's a lot of things that we're trying to integrate with the new technologies, and it's taken a little bit of time, but... There's a lot of things there. There's many prayers. There's a lot of blog posts, prayers. There's a lot of resources designed to help you grow in the Lord. So that's all available in there for you. As we do go forth, hey, you know what? Be a gracious, kind giver wherever you are getting fed. Every ministry is in need. And so be wise in, in discerning in where you give of your tithes and offerings. But don't be that miser. I understand that, that, that money's tight for many, many people, but don't be a miser. You don't, you don't want to withhold from God. So just give what he tells you and you will begin to see what happens in your life as a result of your faithful obedience to him. So that is all for today. I love you all very much. Thank you for partnering with us. And when there is another message, I will be here excited to share it with you. God bless you all till next time. Bye-bye.